guys. Wilmore, or Wilma rather, I'm sorry, and Solrek uh, pushed their waves uh, a little bit further, found the room where the uh, these cultists were sleeping, and then found another room with a bunch of junk just piled up all throughout and strewn in there. Uh, Solrek peeked around, pushed around some stuff, and then found a, a hole in the back of this chamber. Uh, right next to the hole was a table worth of rope tied to one of the legs, and the rope, of course, uh, descending down into the hole. Uh, with a couple of um, trying to figure out what to do, he jumped on down there and uh, with a light spell illuminating the way. And about a second passed as he went down there, he could see a flash of two figures. Uh, one being some sort of humanoid, uh, you know, medium sized figure, and then the other being some sort of large, crystalline looking uh, dragon of sorts, a purple kind of crystalline dragon. And uh, as soon as you guys made your way down there, the light spell seemed to have been dispelled. And the voices call out to you and says, hold it right there. Nobody make a move. I think we should listen to him, guys. Who are you? What is your purpose? Why do you find yourselves here, in this place? Well, uh... Yeah. Go on. I think we... We may be here for the same reason as you. And what reason would that be? Uh... Why don't you tell us the reason you're here? N n nice one, Solrak. <laughs> Well, we had a scroll of plane shift that we used to try to... Well, it doesn't matter where we were going. The fact is, is that we used the scroll and we ended up here somehow. Stuck. Now, if our senses tell us right, we are somewhere in the far realms. Now tell me, what is your purpose? Looks like our purpose is the same as you, friend. Destroy this place so we can get the hell out of here. As you say that, you see this wave of purple light just flash before you guys. And this dragon shimmering in crystals all around its body. Claws a little bit closer to you guys and says, Are you here to destroy the brain? Okay. And I, as as she says that, can, can I sense if there's any like, like anger in her voice or like, like I want to see if she wants to destroy the brain? Yeah, make an insight check. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, are we on the same page here, guys? <laughs> As Moria, yeah, thanks for the did. sub, dude. Appreciate it. <laughs> Deuces. Are you here to destroy the brain? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you can tell that you look around and you see that they have a couple of things, like, stored away in one of these uh, corners. And they look, you know, a little um, tired and, uh, you know, not 100%. But uh, you can definitely tell the sincerity in their voice and seriousness that uh, they abhor the place that they found themselves in, and of course the being that rules it. I uh, when I look at the dragon, I say, as I said, friend, we're here to destroy this place so we can get the hell out. And if that involves that brain, well, looks like you found some allies to do it. He's oh yeah, it, it, would... it definitely. Go ahead. I said, oh yeah, Soul Wrecker. It didn't definitely. It uh, definitely involves the brain. We're trying to fucking kill that thing, if I'm not mistaken. As I kind of start approaching them, and I'm like, seems like you kind of are on the same page as us about this whole uh, brain thing. And in doing so, like I'm, I'm kind of approaching the guy, but I just kind of lay my hand on the. Um, uh, on the dragon real quick 
and I just I feel this little bond with it. Um, and in doing so, um, I will. Can I? Um, can I spend like if I would I have to spend two key points to uh, kind of give them a little like hand of healing? Uh, yeah. If you, if you want to do one. it for each of them, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll do that. Let them know. Sure. So that they can. Uh, I, I see that they're looking a little rough. So. Yeah, yeah you, you, you look over mm. at them and, um, you know, it's more so that they're, like, ex- almost, like, worn down as if, like, they've been uh, <laughs> stuck in here for a little bit of time. And as, Sounds uh, like they need a short rest. <laughs> <laughs> as you uh, lay your hands on them and this glowing energy pulses through them, uh, the dragon's head arches towards you. You can hear and see, like, the light shine on the crystals uh, and refract in... Uh, shine different colors in your way as he kind of looks down at you getting down to eye to eye with you he says thank you you know it's been hard being stuck down here every now and then uh, my friend and I Gosa and he gestures over to the mage behind him who just kind of gives a nod to you guys says, well, we've been making raids every now and then going up into that hole to try to get what we can and and find out what information that we can. But as you can probably, as you all probably can tell uh, and found out by yourselves that this place isn't very fruitful or rife with uh, lots of things for us. Uh, you know, we've been going around and trying to find what we can here. Uh, I believe that we. I mentioned in a place of the far realm and with Talavar this brain might be well he's from what I understand is in a place called the endless void I heard uh, this man this matic man and some creature he was with chatting with themselves uh, a crazy folk they mentioned that there was beyond a, a lightless star don't know what that means, but I hope to find out, and especially with you all here, maybe we can work together and put our minds to work. Well, just just so to be what, clear, what those, were you? those two are dead okay. now. But, yeah. That's the, interesting. The the madman and the, the creature with uh, many heads and many teeth. They're dead. Yeah, yeah. It seemed like they were... They were trying to get down here. They, they kept saying that they wanted to fight. I, I, I look at the dragon. You specifically. <laughs> but um, I took care of him. Kind of looks oh, yeah. at you, and you see he him took, kind of. She took care of him, all right. <laughs> slowly like nods. See, his I head, have one agreement. Looking at you guys, and uh, the mage behind him um, chimes in, says, uh, "What about the mind fl- or the uh, the beholder that's up there?" Oh, don't you worry, I took care of him as well. They both kind of look at each other, like, wide-eyed now. And you see him uh, kind of cup his his mouth as he whispers something to the dragon. And the dragon nods and says, You all seem quite capable, quite powerful. And as you mentioned, on a similar quest that we find ourselves on, Perhaps, oh, and he kind uh, of nods again over to them. Perhaps we can find an allegiance with you four. Well, I'll say be... this. Two more people wouldn't make us any weaker if you're picking up what I'm putting down, buddy. <laughs> I, 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 I'd also say a dragon makes us very, very nice. And and you, and I, and I kind of stare at him just for like two seconds too long. You look nice too. What, what a beautiful dragon you have! What, what oh, yeah, dragon. You have a beautiful guy. Think, by the way, if you know. What'd you say, Luke? So, what realm were you guys from? If you don't mind me asking. We come from um, 
place called the Rock of Brawl out in wild space. Are you familiar? Not at all. Ah, yes, it's a, it's a city built upon an asteroid. Uh, started out as a, a pirate's uh, refuge of sorts, but has grown into quite an expanse of a, a beautiful, beautiful city floating out in space. Quite far from home. You all are as well, as I can imagine that. Oh, are you from the Fey Realm? He looks over at you, uh, Wilma. Absolutely. Well, I started the Fey Realm, and then went to the Material Plane, and then hung out in Waterdeep, and then, um, you know, I just, uh, we're, we're kind of a big deal, uh, in the, in the Material Plane. It's, uh, you might have heard of us, the Wrecking Crew. I, I don't know if it goes out to Pirate Land, but it's kind of a big deal. Wrecking Crew. No, uh, sorry. It's a pleasure to meet you, though, and, uh, my name is, uh, Lauren Nezel, and the dragon kind of bows down to you, and, uh, of course, this is Gosa, kind of gestures over to the mage. Um, see, this place so that we find ourselves... how did you find yourself... Oh, Go ahead. How did we find ourselves here? Is that what you're going Pre to ask? Precisely. Yep, how did you find yourselves here, with the same kind of task at hand? from a completely different realm that we're not familiar with. Well, as I mentioned, it kind of errant spell scroll of a plane shift went awry I and guess. deposited us to here, but seemingly uh, we did not know of this place before we got here or what have you. We have learned what we can from the, the fanatics around here, from the man ranting off wildly and manically around himself and well, what we've been able to put together is that uh, there is uh, an elder brain of sorts leading a allegiance, uh, a hive mind of mind flayers. Uh, we haven't seen too many mind flayers or lithids make their way through here at all, but apparently in this uh, endless void, um, that is where the hive mind is. When he, when he says that, I kind of... No, this is what I kind of look over at Solrak. It's like he's right for a for a mind flayer colony. We've only run into two mind flayers, but um, mm. I think uh, gentlemen and and then I look at the dragon, gentle thing. <laughs> I think um, at the end of the day, the only way any of us make it out of here is through the brain. Not like our ours actually. I meant the big one. <laughs> well, uh, agreed about the brain, <sighs> but remember, just like our buddy here, uh, just because we haven't seen any mind flayers except those couples, doesn't mean that there aren't infected with them. It's just all about the matter of when the brain decides to hatch them. So Barney Legends putting up the good fight. That's right. But uh, it might be wise to think that if the time does come f that he does fully turn, he might not be the only one. So, to keep that eye, an eye on that. You see, you see him now extend his neck out and begin sniffing around up to Larnin. And looks at him and says, Don't trust this one. Oh. Uh, Larney has died and come back to life more times than anybody I know. And, uh. Still a good guy. Thanks. Thanks to us. He's, he's doing the right thing before he goes to the, to the other side. So. Let him. Have his noble ending. So Rack, Soul needs it. You hear a voice in your head as the dragon's still looking down at Lauren and say, How do we know that when he meets his end? I mean, his end as a human. How do we know he won't turn on us? <laughs> the second he... And I'm saying this in my head. Mm-hmm. The second he's no longer human, there won't be a head on his shoulders to turn on us. 
you already made the pact with him. When he turns, he's already dead. Which means the Mind Flayer will also go to the other side. You hear a voice respond to you in your head again, just saying, On my word, don't need him to transform. I can sense it. When I tell you, you take his head. Until then, I will take your word for him. I look at Larney for a second, and then I go back to my brain, my thoughts. You got yourself a deal. On your word, and only on your word. See the dragon smell Larnin once again. He kind of turns around and begins to st stroll back over to his side. And he says, We saw them bring in a couple of... A couple of guests, I guess you could say. Really, truly prisoners, of course. Uh, a couple of days ago. I can only imagine what they have in plans with them. Sure. Sure, they're already on their ways to becoming a mind flayer. Those disgusting geeks. Did you uh, happen to catch sight of these prisoners? Can you describe them? Yes, uh, we saw um, a couple of, of humans, um, maybe three or four humans, uh, a halfling. Uh, there was a a half giant or, or a giant of sorts that was with them, uh, a rather large folk. Oh shit! I look at Fang, and he says, "Giant." Uh. Any? Did you happen to catch uh the capture say anything about where they captured these prisoners? Anything at all, or what kind of giants? So I would, I would, I would see this going on. I, I turn back and go. I think he said half giant. The only giants I've seen were full giants. You know what I'm saying? He said half giant or giant. Uh, yeah, uh, Harshnag was not, literally said both. Har not the biggest giant that I've ever seen, which is why you know I'm not quite sure if it was a half or a or. Maybe it was a hill giant of sorts. Maybe, you know, smaller than, than yes, a frost giant or a storm giant. Maybe even a troll, I'm not sure. We didn't get a full view of it. I think at the end of the day, I think the faster we, we find the brain, potentially the less people that have gone through uh, stasis are, are, um, have you guys been able to scope out this area any, or did you guys just pop up in here and you guys can make it up the hole, right? Yes, no, uh, Ghostly here has, that's how we've been able to find out this information that we have is every now and then going up there, see what they can find out without being spotted, uh, perhaps find us some food or something to bring down here. Uh, the rations can only last so long. And of course, tried to find a way out of here. It seems we have not been able to find an exit yet. Well, I think um, maybe just just maybe it's it's time that we uh, head up and be spotted a little. I give him. Uh, I take one of my barrel stalk mushrooms out and just kind of break it in half and give it to both of them. Be like, yeah, this. This barrel stalk mushroom is something that we found not too long ago, and uh, it acts as food, and it's got enough moisture to hydrate you as well. Aside from my little uh, hand that I kind of gave you, uh, I'm sure this might help you out a little bit, and uh, give you guys the energy that you might need to get out of here. Um, were you able to find, upon going up there, um, a direction that we might need to head in, or where these prisoners might have gone? As as after he says that, I kind of lean back to Solrak and I go, 
I think just gave him his a uh, nice handy and a mushroom tip, huh? <laughs> I told you he was into that. <laughs> uh, you know, there's is a uh, a doorway up to the uh, on the northernmost side. <laughs> Uh, you know, there's a few rooms over on this side where we find ourselves. Uh, there's a northernmost doorway where I've seen them go through. We're just beside the room where the uh, those aberrant zealots were stationed and sleeping in. Uh, I think we might need to go through there, but there is another doorway as well, which confuses me. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking in the room, and I'm looking to the left. These these two little kind of items that are shunting out, mm -hmm. are those like similar levels, levers to what we've seen before. Uh, yeah, they do look like like two similar kind of like metal rods that are sticking out of like the fleshy walls here. So I kind of look at the guys, and it's like those seem to be uh, what us and the Gex were did to open the main door. Do you guys think maybe? Maybe these will open uh, one of the doors. It's yeah, worth a shot. It's almost as, it's almost as far as away, it's almost as far away as the uh, original prongs were to that other door. I mean, Quite kind of look up, kind of look up to the other two. It's like you guys haven't messed with these, have you? No, you you say they're for a door. I I honestly thought they were for a, a doorway of sorts as well. And Gosa here thought that it was. Worrying that it was some sort of alarm or something. No, we've uh, we've approached these before. They'll probably open one of the two doors above. Not sure which one, but it'll only be open for so long. So once we grab them and allow the circuit to pass, we'll have to hustle. You all say that this is the way, then. If you're all ready, do let's, we go, let's do this. I guess the question is, do we try for the door in the north first, or the door in the south that has that kind of freaky little uh, uh, coverage thing over it? Which I think we try whichever one is closest first. Well, I, uh, if you all say that this will open a door, there are two sets of doors out there. I, uh, I guess we'll see which one it opens. I think that's fair enough. Let's um, head out. But before we go, a uh, question for you. How long have you been down here? Looking to the dragon and the guy. Yeah, it's been about a week. And no one comes down here to mess with you guys at all? No, the crazy man has been trying to find us, but no, no one's messed with us at all. Uh, the guy. Is that the guy that we killed? Um, if... If you recall, Solrek, the the last time we tried to take a rest, something went in your brain. That's right, but that was when we were up there. Now we're down here. And they've been down here a week. What's to say one more hour? If you guys if you guys want to try, feel free. I I'm good though. Just say it would be super beneficial, and if they've been down here a whole freaking week. Uh, you know, say I've, I've I've said my piece after the last time when we tried to hang out and somebody came into my brain and said, "Don't do that." I'm I'm, I'm good, but so, feel free to try. Wil Wil Wilma, are you almost insinuating that they kind of have our marks? I'm I'm insinuating we're sitting in what appears to be a giant brain that's attached to another giant brain, and they know we're here. So if we think that they didn't follow us down here or something like that, that's fine. And and if you guys want to try to hang out for a bit, that's that's absolutely fine. I just I just have a sense that they already know we're hanging out here. So Rick, you know, as much as much as I or we, I guess, really need a little rest, I think Wilma here is right. You know, the last time we tried, you know, I mean, I mean, you remember. I think, if anything, we just kind of got to keep moving and 
just kind of hope we uh, kick some ass. Maybe Wilma or our new friends here are able to help us out in any way. But now there's two more members. And again, despite being you know, tired and feeling a little weak and beat up, our chances are a little better of uh, being able to survive whatever lies ahead of us. So I'm with Wilma on this one, unfortunately. Uh, if you guys say so, but uh, I think uh, this is the closest. I, the, the only time I can say that I don't know if we're all gonna make it. So well, let's go. Guys. I mean, you look better than you look better than me, though. I and am no Lord longer in a position to absorb damage like I used to can. So, this is my no last stand. Box. If you want to try to take a little rest here, that's that's fine. I don't know. I kind of look at the um, look at the dragon and the other guy. I, have you guys been able to rest down here easily, or as you look at them and how like disheveled and like restless they look, uh, so you, you find very little sleep at night. There are pockets where you don't find incursions reaching into the crevices of our mind but behold or nonetheless we are able to get some sleep just not not very well rested if you would like to try say to say you could buy us an hour yes, if you'd like to try uh, we can certainly wait for you uh, would rather of course you all be at your best if possible don't know truly Say no more. what we'll encounter out there. Yeah, I think. And I see the cot and I say no more. And I go, <laughs> <laughs> Fang? And I tap it. <laughs> I mean, again, like, I don't mind I trying down. to take a look. Fucking... Just try. Started resting. <laughs> I think you guys Timer on. on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Yeah. <laughs> all right, I will. Uh, I will certainly try. All right. Um, I want you both roll me a D one hundred. No. I think I rolled a six last time. I rolled really Wait. high, so I don't know. Yeah, what yeah, you Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yes, thank God. Hundred. 89. It was almost a 9. Well, is, is, do you want high or do you want 11? High? I feel like you just need to get 11. <laughs> 11. 11. I got, I got. <laughs> you got 89 and you got 11? Yep. No, no, no. No, did you get 11? I did. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I hope that's what we needed. Or not just 101. That's, that is 100. <laughs> That's a 50. So you guys lay down. Uh, Solrak first. Getting down on the, on the squishy ground. Uh, it smells a little rancid over here. Uh, but nonetheless, you you just find yourself a place to situate. A, get a little comfortable. Cerebral, that's, yeah, that's cerebral fluid. Yes, exactly. Uh, Fang, I'm preparing for a mental ailment. So, <laughs> Fang sits down next to him. Uh, crisscross applesauce. And uh, you guys just kind of sit there and meditate and relax for a little bit of time as the rest of the group... Actually, Lauren will, of course, join you guys, too. Uh, so just wait for me as he uh, sits next to you. And uh, in this time, uh, um, yeah, Lauren Azel, the dragon, will go over to Wilma and, uh, and Gosa as well. And just uh, begin a little, like, side chatter. Just say... Um, so, we've been here for about a week. You all just got here, I'm guessing, within the last day or two? Yeah, we, um, in, in, uh, in our world, there's a, there's a large city and we fought on our way down here. You know, we've been, we've been underground for probably, I feel like it's two to three days now, but we've only been here and I, like, poke the floor hours a couple of hours and you have 
<laughs> you killed that annoying crazy man and his beast with him. You've killed the Beholder, and you've somehow made your way all the way over here, and... Well... I may have underestimated you all when I first saw have you. I, this is... Have I... Have I told you about the Wrecking Crew yet? <laughs> you did mention the Wrecking Crew, yes. Yeah, it's a, it's a thing. It's a thing. Hmm. Put that thing away. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> Tell me more about this wrecking crew. Well, it, it was it was all started by this wonderful halfling named uh, Wilmore Chattington. Rest in peace, my sweet. Oh, Wilmore Chattington. <clears throat> yeah, you, you may have heard of his name. Of course, he's a legend. I, I know he 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 really um, breaks space and time. It's, it's it's a true thing. But he was um, he was killed by um, this this legend Narvi, um, and you know he was part of the Wrecking Crew. And I went over to to Solrak and Fang, and they've they've been on a quest to um, basically stop our world from being destroyed by. Hey, hey, don't forget oh, Luke Gonge, by the way. He was a... I hear he was a key member as well. I, I I look at him, and then I pull out my book, and I flip through the book, and I go, Ah, the legendary stank-ass Luke Gonge. Yes, 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 yes. He's here, too. Um, <laughs> but, you know, at the at the end of the day, the, the Wrecking Crew has tasked themselves with basically saving our, our entire plane of existence, really. Uh, it's... Uh, it's a heavy task, but with uh, Solrak the Destroyer, Fang the Mang, and and well, the whole legacy of the Chattingtons. It's it's a. Uh, let's just say we have um, we have a list, and we're making our way through it. Kind of just nods and grins at you. Impressive, impressive. Say, when we get out of here, then, you Wrecking Crew, uh, I challenge thee to help Goso and I find our way back somehow to Wild Space, back to the Rock of Brawl. At the end of the day, as long as nothing stands between us and Narvi, we'll get you where you need to be. <laughs> you don't, You don't need to be there for our final fight. We try to get everyone home safe. And I look at the dragon, I make eye contact, and then I look at Larn and I just go, everyone home safe. He sees you, and like, clocks you doing that, and then looks back at Gosa, the mage, and he kind of just shakes his head. And uh, then dragon looks back over at you and says, You speak of a, of a final fight. Say, if you all are helping us get out of here, the least we could do is help you all get what you truly need. We... We are... We are readying, readying the armies of, of, our, of our land. Giants, frost giants, storm giants, dragons, dwarfs, Dragons. We'll add in another dragon then to the legacy. We'll take everything we need, everything we could find, because at the end of the day, we'll need it all. <laughs> oh, we will give it our all. And uh, you see, Gosa uh, starts flipping through like his spell book, thumbing through it, and like starts to <laughs> memorize a couple of spells to prepare for uh, such a day. And uh, Dragon looks over back at the, the the rest of the guys and says <clears throat> that uh, the bald one back there. What's his story? His story is uh, well, it's it's one of a little bit of sorrow. You see, he's uh, it's it's quite interesting. We're we're all here fighting our fight for a reason and, and he had his uh he had his whole town burnt to a crisp destroyed 
but yet he uh he decided to to stand up and fight against those giants and he uh he joined the wrecking crew from uh <laughs> from a bird in the sky it was actually it's actually quite interesting but at the at the end of the day you know as as long as and then i and then i look at the wizard and i go you know, all your personal perse- uh, possessions are finally secured and then i look back at the dragon he's a uh, he's actually a pretty good guy He'll fight to the end, and um, he'll fight for what's good, which kind of doesn't really work sometimes, but he, he does it. <laughs> I noticed the, uh, the tattoo is adorning his arms and his skull, and of course the bloodied, bruised up knuckles. Man seems like he knows that, uh, he knows that the true weapon is oneself. He's a, he's a very central, focused man. Man of Lathander as well, which is, uh, and I kind of like clutch my little necklace, mm-hmm. which is always something fun to have around. Yeah, a little faith can go a long way sometimes. Yeah, and a lot of faith can go even further. <laughs> I clutch my Pearls again. And uh, then he says, and the bearded one. Oh, the bearded one. Well, I'll be honest with you. I've actually only known these two for about maybe a week. But, and I pull out. <laughs> Shit, it's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and I pull out, and I pull out my book. You know, they, <laughs> They, they all befriended my um, my lover, Wilmore, and um, the story on the build on the bearded one is um, probably one of the. It's probably one of the saddest of the crew, except for my dear, dear Wilmore. But as far as we know, his family has been killed. It's been uh, destroyed by his uncle, who took his seat, his seat of power at his at his town. And now, Narvi holds that town hostage, everything in it, to his whim. He's creating demons out of the darkness. He's pulling things up from the darker planes to take over our world. And it all it's kind of poetic justice here. It's all coming from the seat of power that Solrek technically still own. But um, at the end of the day, he's a feisty one. But we we have to get him back to where he is. See, so kind of starts to dig his claws into the flesh in the ground a little bit as you are starting to say this, as he's seething with anger from hearing about this story. He says. This story rings way too close to home to me. I, too, have fallen a similar fate. I shall do everything in my power to make sure that revenge is taken. And those that did him wrong, did you wrong, killed the one you love, and killed the one that he loves gestures over to Fang I will do everything in my power to make sure that their wrongs are righted by not only the Wrecking Crew but Lorenzel, the great Amethyst Dragon of Wild Space you feel like this kind of like magnetic push against your body as he's saying this <laughs> As to the energy I, within him is just start building. I, I put my hand on him, and I go, and I even look at the mage, and I go, I sense we're all from a, we're all from a fallen, a fallen seat. But together, 
may just be able to make the ones that took it from us pay. They will pay. Oh, they will pay. And, uh, and the dragon notices my, my hand stays there just a little too long, and it kind of like massages <laughs> <laughs> and the camera pans on over to Solrak and Fang and Lauren and over in the corner. Uh, in this time period, what are you guys doing other than, yeah, just like resting? Honestly, I'm exhausted. So I'm uh, tending to my wounds mm -hmm. and trying to stay at alert just in case something comes, but I'm pretty exhausted. Cool. Yeah, makes sense. Fang? Yeah, you know, I, I, as I was just kind of sitting there and just relaxing, um, I couldn't help but overhear some of the things they were saying. And for a moment, I'm, I'm relieved that we're able to uh, get the help that we have. But then I start kind of thinking about Zoku and, and Cuomo. And well, I know I still have Cuomo, but it just feels like it's been such an exhausting couple days. And it's been the longest couple days, quite frankly, of not being with him. And I just can't help but think to finally or to, to be able to see him again soon to get out of this brain and help save uh, Faerun. With him alongside, as well as well as these guys. But yeah, I just continue, just to kind of dwell, relax. After kind of going through that, I clear my head and get recentered and begin to focus on our next steps. Indeed. As you, uh, you listen into their conversation, and as the conversation kind of um, tunes out, fades out a little bit, you lean up against the wall to rest, and a little bit of that like cerebral fluid just drips down your shoulder, leaving like a stain on your on your um, vestments. And you guys find a, a moment of time to rest here, uh, seemingly uninterrupted. That is until. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, you guys take a short rest. As, as, we're, as they're finishing up their rest, can I go over to the mage and kind of pass him Ajax spell book and just, you know, I can't make anything of this. Maybe somebody of, of the cloth. I kind of tug generously at his, uh, you know, cloth. Um, <laughs> maybe you can make anything of this. I kind of hand him Ajax Spellbook to see if he can uh, potentially translate a spell or two for me. Sure. During um, the short rest. Yeah, give me a second. Let me pull that up. Let me see. I'm going to roll him an Arcana check. Oh, hell yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, Rex full health now. Look at that. Yeah, buddy. The legends back up. God. Let's see. Where did I have that? Yeah, so he uh, begins to flip through the pages a little bit, and, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm sorry, I, I don't understand this, this language, per se, but, uh, let's see, and he begins to, like, try to, like, read through it still and try to make out what he can. Uh, this one here says it requires a, uh, a copper piece, which, uh, to me sounds like detect thoughts. Uh, a spell for detect thoughts. Uh, 
this one over here, uh, it seems like like you know all the spells and everything are, are written out in like completely uh, alien with it writing as you know, I've been mentioned a few times. But uh, he's able to like determine or make out what the spell components are for some of the spells in here. To um, you know, in his arcane knowledge, he's able to pick out what those are. Uh, and he, his eyes go wide as he flips through and he gets to one page. He's like, this. This, uh, this must be a scroll, a plane shift here. He looks over up at, at the uh, dragon and says, This is a scroll, a plane shift here. You know what that means, right? Ah, oh, shit. I, I, never mind. I I can't read it. I can't read the words. It's not going to work. Uh, still, uh, maybe we'll be able to translate it or something, and we can make it work that way. Um... So what he's able to determine is that there's a plane shift, a levitate, and a detect thoughts spells, at least in it. But I can't read them because we need to translate them, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, the I guess the written language that a lithid use, it wouldn't be celestial, would it? No. Okay. So I, 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 I look at him and, it, and I go, um, plane shift. Look, with enough rest, I can potentially channel my deity to translate this for you. But we won't be able to do this now. We we have to take out the brain. And then I look at the dragon and I go, I understand your desire to, to help us. But if you want to go home, you can go home. After we kill this fucking brain. See him just grin as uh, the sides of his lips just like go upwards and pierce uh, th as a couple of his teeth exposed now. He says, Let's kill this fucker. And then I hop over and I, I imagine like <laughs> Solrak is like half snoring and, and, and Fang is like a big spoon to Solrak's little spoon and then Larney's got his like head just in like the crook of fangs <laughs> knees and I hop over and then I jump in the air and I just body splash them all I go <laughs> time to wake up bitches <laughs> yeah. I wake up. oh I feel better god I can never guess who's gonna be right Wilma or Solrek so uh, Solrek I'm happy you kind of uh Argued the fact that we should take a short rest. Here. I feel great. You look great. Uh, look great. That's God, right. I can't ever. And, uh, I, I to, can't win. To be fair, I just you know I just genuinely thought that you guys were like me and didn't need to take a nap because I wasn't a baby. And then I just kind of hop over here. Yeah, because it was a kitty. You, you do all the hiding in battle. But I don't. I don't hear any of this. I don't. I don't hear or understand any of this. It's they might as well be talking. But anyways, about it. good just to know that I was right. I say it super loudly. Okay. It, oh, so I go, get no soul rack. The whole to the left. <laughs> by by the way, while I was resting, I kind of thought you know, buddy here, you are a uh, a dragon of some sorts, and I was like. Do you know who Clouth is? Oh, of course. Clouth is a legend. Ah, oh, cool. I didn't know if you guys knew each other from being from uh, different realms, realms, and I just kind of like oh, well, pull away my uh, like, oldest and greatest Manistic dragons of favor. And I just show him just like my insignia of claws and like, yeah, we can kind of. Somewhat working alongside Clouth as well. So you do have a dragon on your team then, my god. I thought you were joking when you already said that you had one, but... And Clouth. The That's right. old Snarl Clouth. That's the same Clouth. Well, uh, you Wrecking as, Crew as you battles. amaze <laughs> me more and more. I get to know you. I hop over I and I bug on his leg. He looks down and I go, have you, have you heard of the Wrecking Crew? 
I'm sure I will be chanting your name back at the Rocket Brawl when I get back to uh, oh, what the fuck was the tavern called there? So it's, uh, the Laughing Beholder is what it's called. Yeah. That's a sick name. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, to be fair, uh, maybe if the, the Happy the Beholder. The of our called. battles. Portions of our battles are pretty great, you know. Uh, if we fail, uh, our entire plane of existence will just poof. <laughs> so, uh, Plus, you know, we've made some friends along the way. And depending on the outcome of this, which for the Wrecking Crew, we're pretty much batting a thousand for battles. Um, once we're done, we'll, we'll show you that time on. Wilmore died, but you know. Well, that's why I said we're pretty much batting a thousand, but I didn't, uh, <laughs> out of a lot much. of battles. A lot of battles. Minus the whole anyway. disintegration thing, but you know. Thank you, Debbie Downer. Technically, technically, he's still with us. Right. Regardless, <laughs> regardless, we will take you to our tavern called Wilma. What's it called? I think it's called the Wrecking Crew, right? Have you heard of it? Right, the Wrecking Crew. Have you all heard of it? You all have Where a, you a tavern too. That's, That's right. right. We are. We opened up a small business and amongst us all this time. He just kind of like throws his little hands up. We need. How do you have so much we time? Have... <laughs> well, you, well, we you have to diversify. So, you have so, to diversify so, your crews, you know. So, it's not just about and slashing and bashing. You have to put a little bit of uh, money on the side too and watch it grow. You if you, and we have, have a you ever trusty shoved... man watching over. It's, but we need to have some sort of passive income while we're busting our ass out on the front line. Have you ever shoved about three years of time and you know? About eight months of in-world time. That's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> you ever heard of an NFT? You know, a, a natural cherry tree. tree. Yeah, so, when, uh, when we started this stream, <laughs> NFTs were still a thing. <laughs> I, I haven't heard of them in a while. You're right. You're right. Uh, they were a thing when we started. NFTs exactly. Will never die. <laughs> but, gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen. I, I, I think maybe, and I kind of point to the to the sticks. Maybe it's time to see if we can open a door. Yeah. Remember, we're going to so, go. Um, okay, which door are we going to try? The south, the north door? Or the closest door? I I mean, maybe. Wh why don't. Um, so, Rick, you have the broom. And, um, I mean, why don't you, Larney, and uh, Fang just kind of go up there right now? And then I'll wait two or three minutes. I'll hit these. And I, and I looked to what was the dragon's name again? It is um, I'll, I'll I'll put it in the chat so you can see it, but it's Lauren uh it's Lauren it's Nizel. There you go. And I'll um, and I'll um, um I'll I look at I look at large 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 Larney, <laughs> and and I go you know maybe you can um ride me and and what was the other guy's name? Uh, Gosa. Uh, maybe you, me, and Frank can fly on up there after I uh, after I do this, and and we can see if the if the top door opens. Sounds good. All right. Well, so, uh, Solrak, why don't you get why don't you get the crew up there, and then um, we'll we'll head on up in uh, about three minutes. All right. How deep was this hole? As deep as you want it. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's about twenty feet down. There, there was a rope that went down. Yeah. Uh, just run up. Sure. All right. So, ba ba bum. All right, so the the three of you, Silrek, Larn, and Fang, go up the hole and ma move your way up and around the, um, we'll call it the, the little nook that these zealots had, like, a couple of, of beds set up in, where you find this door um, locked, no features on it, and uh, unable to open. Uh, Wilma, you are downstairs still, of course, with the, the dragon and the mage. What do you do? Yep, so, so I look at them and go, guys, I'm going to... I'm gonna grab hold of these for about a half a second, and then um, and I look up to uh, Larwall. Uh, 
And then if you don't mind flying us to up that hole and uh, to the north, see if we can we can catch up with our friends. Absolutely. Let's uh, see my kind of crack his neck back and forth. Let's do it. All right. Let's let's see what happens. And and I'm trying to like remember what the guests did. Um, they just like grab both of them, right? It was just all yeah. go for a second, and then it opens. All right. So I reach out, I grab both uh, both sticks. Wait a second, mm-hmm. and yep. then as as you grab both, you feel a jolt of energy course through your hands, up into your arms, hits your elbow, and starts. So your hands are just gripped on there, and your body is revolting and shaking about. I need you to make a Constitution saving throw with disadvantage. Damn! Damn, son! Seven. Seven. All right. You take 24 points of lightning damage. (laughs) Energy courses through your body. And finally, you feel it seize. Your hands, you know, they were like completely seized up grabbing these. Uh, You couldn't like let go. And finally, the energy stops and you're able to release and kind of fly back a couple of feet. And uh, yeah, a little shaken up from that. But. Fang, Solrak, and Larnan, you hear, uh, it sounds like a, a mechanism moving where you guys are, but it sounds like it's coming from the south. From the south? Oh, shit. Mm-hmm. I, uh, look over at Fang, <laughs> I say, you're the fastest, hold that door, and I start running towards it. As soon as oh, I fall off, I... I'm running fast, too, and I'm... I'm not, I'm not even arguing with him. I just start running already. There's no time. Um, uh, is Wilma, it you're, coming, you're coming up. Yeah, yeah as soon as I fall off, I, I look at the mage and I look at the dragon. I go, it's time to go. And I and I hop on his back. Hop on his back. Whew, takes up. Uh, goes to, hops on too as they fly. Actually, he gravitates on up because that's cooler. And uh, yeah, you guys find your way up into that room with all the junk and everything. Solrak and Fang are running their way back around the corner uh, and you spot them as they're doing so. Yep, and I tell them, follow them, don't go north. Yep, and it keeps on flying on down, following through, uh, chasing after. Can you drag Larnan? Yep, I gotcha. There's Larnan. You guys make your way into this room where you still hear like that high-pitched whining sound and, uh, he, the dragon keeps on flying with Wilma and uh, Gosa uh, right behind him. As you guys keep on flying, whoops, my screen went back. Over here, guys. There you go. You see a door opened up over to uh, your west side, Fang. And as you push on into this room, uh, you see just uh, dark Ikor. It's like kind of uh, on the on the walls and on the ground, and you see a couple of mind flare corpses, maybe three or four, then spread around in this area. Also on the walls, you see like dozens of crystals. Um, they gleam with all different kinds of like lights and inner colors uh, inside of them. And uh, as Dragon gets in here now, there's like you know these purple crystals on the walls. Uh, he kind of slows down as he flies on in here. And begins to just scan around the room. And then of course looks down at like his crystalline form. Are you, are you familiar with these crystals here, Goza? Goes and look looks around at them. Let me go and roll an intelligence for him. These, these crystals, they don't sense they have any sort of connection, uh, at least directly to me, although I feel, though, as I look at them, that this is some sort of sign. I'm not sure what these crystals hold or what they mean. Well, I, I kind of take it as a red flag that... There's two elithids that are deceased right in front of us in 
an area where I would imagine they'd be thriving. And I don't know if it's the crystals that had anything to do with it. I'll make an investigation roll. I kind of search the bodies to see if there's any signs of how they died. Mm -hmm. Let's see what you roll. You want me to do uh, investigation. investigation? Yeah, yeah. I said that. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for oh, No, I didn't hear that. Uh, All good. I, it's probably the laptop. All good. It's just an i3. Uh, 14. 14. Um, okay, with a 14, uh, you look over this mess, and you see that these... It looks like the Mind Flayers all, like, killed one another in, like, some sort of gruesome fight, but you, with a little bit more of a keen eye, uh, you realize that these bodies almost look like they were staged this way, in a way to, like, look like they, like, you know, killed each other or whatever. What you can tell is that most of these were killed with tridents, actually. You see three pierced holes in them and, uh, and a couple of slashes looking like almost like from a great axe or some sort of like a great sword or something like that uh, you don't see any weapons present though or nearby or anything like that gentlemen it's interesting they seem to have uh, wounds perhaps from like a trident and or a, a great sword here but it almost looks uh artificial in the sense that this isn't the exact position in which they died. Almost like they were staged. And then I notice this, and would that be another um, a lithid body? or? Oh yeah, yeah, it's dismembered lithid body. Okay. Yes, yeah, so Perhaps it doesn't seem like it had anything to do with the crystals, but definitely be careful about, you know, other beings being in here. Because, I don't know, Trident is familiar to me for some reason. Um, did we come across any creatures that were slain by Tridents recently or anything like that? Um... No check needed. I don't think you guys have. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. I was just like, I don't know. I just maybe, I don't know. Maybe I've seen Little Mermaid too many times. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Ursula. <laughs> she, she came up in my one shot last Saturday. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I said, oh, you you ran into a sea hag too. <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone, maybe we uh, I think we need to uh, keep an eye out. But uh, proceed. So, again, uh, I will. Again, I don't. I, I, I will go and just kind of take a because I noticed the dragon, you know, the shards look kind of similar to him mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. I would just kind of go and just take a quick, close gander to them. I don't know if passive perception or anything like that. Put the two and two together or anything like that. Make an arcana check for me. Uh, big money, no whammies. Fuck. All right. Um. Yeah, it, purple crystal, purple crystal. Clearly, they're connected. Well, this looks nice. <laughs> all right. Kind of keep on hopping, all ho hopping through. All right. uh, <coughs> I don't know if we. Do we keep on going, everybody? I say we so. keep moving forward. Maybe, uh, I wouldn't touch the uh, crystals until we get a better idea Oopsie, as sorry. to what they are. They mean to do that. Girls, I keep checking those crystals out. It seems like you should know what they are. They look awfully similar to the ones that are adorned on you. But let's keep moving. Uh, Gosa looks over at them quickly uh, at a glance and just says, I'm not sure. They, I don't trust them, though. Let's just make sure we keep our distance. 
I'll definitely take your word on not trusting the crystals. I don't think we should, quite frankly, be trusting anything in here. Exactly. Maybe let's not touch them. God, a lot of dead illicit bodies hit here. If you want to kind of lead the way there, Solrak. Uh, yeah, I'm waiting on you guys. And uh, I'm going to keep moving. Yeah, no, never mind. Yeah, I'm just going to keep moving. Okay. You keep on um, pushing uh, in here. You see more dead mind flayers, more purple crystals lining in the walls, glowing and almost humming with a little bit of energy. From uh, a sense of... I'm going to look at Larnan, actually. Larnan, do you feel anything when you approach these crystals? Um, no, I mean, let's see. Uh, he, he's going to make an intelligence check. 17. Uh, no, they are alluring, beautiful, and... Uh, but I don't know. I know. I don't, I don't feel or sense anything. Should do, he starts to reach his hand out. Should, do you want to observe it further? If anyone's going to touch it, I think you should look on it. I trust you. Is there a section think, uh... over here that like doesn't have um, <laughs> stuff? What's... Yeah, I'm, yeah I'm, I'm going to move over here, kind of. Kind of out of the. I'm gonna look at Larney and say, I just don't think it's a coincidence that we're in the one room that's full of these things, and uh, we'll look around. And I point to the dead mind flares. Do the wounds that they? Okay, I have two questions. Do the wounds that the Alithids have? Do they look like they could have been like piercings from? like a jagged edge from these crystals uh no you so rolled you rolled high enough on your perception or your investigation that they seemed like especially the way that they're uh, they equally were like spaced yeah okay oh, um and then, well, yeah that's thing. true you did say it looked like they were staged here so maybe whoever put them here wants us to touch these fucking crystals which means we definitely shouldn't <laughs> So I said we keep moving. Um, next question is, um, because we are still under the impression that we're essentially inside a large brain, and anatomically speaking, uh, would we we would we be able to deduce that there is something within, like our brains, that these crystals might um. I guess, like, replicate. Say that again. I'm sorry. I thought Dozer was puking. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, just like the last I bit. I said, so. kidney stones. Like, do these crystals replicate anything, like, inside, or, like, yeah, like, in our brains, essentially? Ooh. Like, since we can kind of assume that we're in a large brain. Uh, make a, a nature check. Or you can do investigation. 16. 16. Um, n no, the crystals themselves don't seem to be like anything that's, you know, would be found in anatomical, like in a, an actual brain. Uh, but like the locations that you find yourselves in uh, definitely seem like, you know, the different lobes of like the brain. They seem to kind of coincide with uh the positioning that you guys like find yourselves in as well like where you are right now um you know it's kind of almost like the like uh like the frontal lobe and enhancing like spatial awareness a little bit um and you guys all got kind of pitching in right now all kind of like more eager to help out uh and that's kind of like just like a, kind of like an environmental feeling of this of this part of the brain that you find yourself in but the crystals okay. themselves, uh, nah, don't seem like anything anatomical. All right. Uh, 
Okay, I said we gotta keep moving. I'm sorry, I mean close. Beautifully this. said. Alright, so, uh. Gotta keep moving. Keep on moving. Keep on moving. Silrek leads the way. Alright, going all the way to the left. To the left, to the left. There's nothing there, sorry. It's just that full wall. <laughs> okay. A hidden door? Let me draw a wall there. Alright, so as you uh, push yourselves further and further on in here, uh, you see that there are two tapered metal rods that protrude from either side of this alcove, about 20 feet or so apart from one another. Uh, you see a folding cot covered with soft furs and a portable writing desk, uh, even deeper in that alcove. And then sitting at the desk, uh, you see a jackal-headed woman. And as she, you guys turn the corner, uh, she shrieks and uh, throws her hands up. Uh, 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 hold it, hold it right there! Hold it right there! I, I mean no danger! I mean no danger to anyone whatsoever! Looking past her, does she have, is there, like, on her or behind her a great sword or a trident? Uh, as you peek, uh, poke around and look around the room real quick, you don't see any weaponry laying around. What are you doing here? Uh, oh, just relax, relax. P please put your weapons away. Oh, you see, she's, like, kind of shaking a little bit. We're not going to hurt you. Just tell us what you're doing. I, I, I've, I've been here uh, exploring this place for a little bit. I, I, I hired a couple of uh, mercenaries to uh, protect me as I look around for forbidden knowledge. It's, it's kind of my thing. Forbidden knowledge. What is your purpose here? They just literally told us. Uh, yeah. uh, do, do, do. What, so, was in... Would you have any forbidden knowledge about this place that could be useful in, say, finding and killing a giant brain within it? Uh, look, I, I haven't even found anything about killing anything, but there's lots of strangeness going on around here. Very strange things. How'd you get in here? Like what? Uh, that doesn't matter. Uh, I've been finding out all sorts of uh, very weird things. Uh, did you know that... Uh, well, the... There's a city down on the material plane that is being taken over by uh, all sorts of fiends and lithids and, and terrible beings and just... Roaming the streets and spreading their plague across the land. Is 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 this like genuine excitement, or is this kind of like she, she knew that, but she's just sharing it? I'll make an insight check. Uh, let me roll something real quick. Okay. Um, yeah, no, it seems like she's, like, uh, you guys are asking her, and she's just, like, telling you, she's really just, like, scared right now, the way she's, like, sputtering things out, really. Uh, kind of really nervous to see you guys, wasn't expecting anything, especially, uh, you know, she mentioned she has bodyguards, but they're nowhere to be found. And I'm trying to remember back when we were in Narvi's temple and we were leaving... And Wilma, like, completely decimated that one, like, the first thing we saw. Wasn't that a jackal in the library? Yeah, Wilma kind of, like, observes this figure a bit closer. And it looks like the female version of uh, the being that you saw in Narvi's temple. Well, yeah, yeah, we, 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 uh, I kind of look back at them. 
I think we heard something similar to that in the material plane. But again, how did you get here? Look, I came here using a spell scroll, trying to find all sorts of, of you know, forbidden and, and secrets, uh, all sorts of different secrets and knowledge and things like that. Uh, it's kind of my, my life's work. Gives you like a, Do you know a, anything a about smile. Do you know anything about Arcana Cloth? Uh, uh, I am myself in Arcana Cloth. Yes. Wait, say it again. I'm sorry, you lag. I am myself in Arcana Cloth. Oh, is that like the being? Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> without their name. Hmm. We, as if, if you know what we are, then you know that we hunger for knowledge and, 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 and power through this knowledge and uh, just looking through records and accounts of all sorts of things. It's just what we do. And she, she's got like all sorts of scrolls and papers strewn out in front of her. I think, I think it's fair enough, but, but uh, you know, you've, you're not telling us anything we don't know yet. I mean, you've been here for. How long have you been here? Uh, hold on, just a short time ago. I swear, my my soldiers, they were here. I, I was studying, I was looking things up, and I looked, and they're gone. And now you guys are here. So I put my hands up in mercy. What's the story? Where are my soldiers? Honestly, I kind of look at like the guys. And, and I, well, they, it looks like they might have, um, if they're tridents or longsword carriers, they they might have actually uh, saved you from some elithids. Quite a few in the uh, in the gem area. Were they there? Well, there's a bunch of dead elithids over there. But anyway, uh, here's the thing. You know, I I found you and and I was hoping, really hoping to learn something. Um, do you? Uh, do you know, like, 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 where we are? Like, you know, we're we're actually looking for a giant brain. Did, did you find any of that in this information? Well, what and, I and now I'm watching her to see if she's like, because the other one was found in Narvi's place. Mm -hmm. Now there's another one here. Like, is this a plant or is this? You know, something of that as I'm kind of talking, trying to get information on the brain from her. Uh, she holds up, like, a tome that she's reading and says, Look, what I was told is that in this place, your senses are heightened. Uh, you're able to pick things up and understand and learn things and comprehend them just better than you could in other places. So I come here with this book, and I'm trying to learn it. And I cannot, for the life of me, understand it. You see, she starts to read it again, just starts mispronouncing the text and slams her fist on the table. Well, what is that book? She's coming a little closer. Holds it closer to herself. Well, don't worry about that. Well, I mean, maybe we have the ability to read any type of text. That's right, uh, little lady. It looks like uh, your bodyguards are probably long dead by now. If you want to survive, you have to share some of that forbidden knowledge with us. Because if we die, it looks like you die too. So, you want to stop the nervousness and just share already so we can freaking move on? Make an intimidation check. Did they roll? Yeah, I see a 12 there. Let me see something. Okay. Uh, looks at you and says, Look, uh, okay. D no need for that. Uh, holds up the, the tome and shows you the cover. It's called The Truths of the Inward Facing Mind. Okay. I don't know exactly what it holds, or else it wouldn't be a secret now, would it? Inward-facing mind? That sounds like the giant brain. 
exactly what we're trying to kill. Well, maybe you guys can help me sound out these words then. Uh, Depends. Okay. I look at him. Um, pretty smart, no? I look at Fang. You're, you're the linguist, right? I am. The issue is, I understand languages that I hear, not what I see. And then I look at um, I look at the the wolf lady and go, "Why don't you try just just reading it aloud to the best of your ability?" But before you do that, what kind of scroll is it? Um, well, it's it's the whole book that like you just told Solrak. It's called the Truths of the Inward Facing Mind. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And I kind of like peek at it real quick. Do I? Can I see what language it's written in? Um, yeah, as you look over at it, um, it is not in any sort of language that you have ever seen before. And you're not able to, uh, like, they're all like, com of, uh, they're like common letters, but like, it, they don't like, like, make common words. Gotcha, yeah, yeah. Why don't you try just to? Maybe we can just try to sound it out together and see if uh, if uh, we make any sense of it. She kind of sl slams the tome down on the desk, and it's it's thick. It's a thick boy. She says, "Well, if you all wanted to help me, well, let's start at the beginning." And starts cracks open the book, and uh, you guys want to try to help her decipher yeah, kinda... this this book. I kind of look at her and I go, yeah. oh, so you've made no progress on this thing. I do not minute, understand uh... the language. If I speak it out loud, as you said, and try to pronounce the words properly, maybe your friend here can understand it. Well, is there is there is there any sections what about in this Goza? That, look, that look important? Uh, yeah. I think the whole thing is probably pretty important. <sighs> guys, guys, do we think Barry Goza can read this? Seems kind of uh, like it's up his alley. Maybe we can, uh, we can try him and uh, G Money. Yeah, worst yeah. case scenario, you try to sound it out. So... And, uh, yeah, and I yeah, kind of look at the thing and I go, it. "It'll probably be like a week for us to read this whole thing." <laughs> but let's um, let's go get kind of like place my hand on it and pull it slowly towards me. Like we have some friends that might be able to help. While while they're going to get Goza, I'm looking at those prongs on the wall protruding. Um, do they look like the same prongs that we've had to touch to open doors? Uh, Just on different? They do, and uh, they're about like 20 feet away from each other. But how about um, you roll me a, a intelligence or investigation roll? Or, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, either one of those would work. <coughs> Uh, you guys got to call it at 11. They are the same. So I know a little bit. Cool. Womp womp Cinco. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, they, they look like the similar kind of rods that you've seen before. Um, but they are too far out of your reach to grab both of them at the same time. Hmm. Uh, as Wilma is starting to try to grab the book, she puts her hand firmly, her paw firmly on the on the tome, and says, uh, you, "You can bring your your friends here if they want to help out, but as as uh, you can probably guess, this is going to take you a bit of time to try to get through this." Uh, I appreciate you, the time if you want to give it and lend it to me, but uh, regardless of the fact if your friend can read it or not, it will take them <laughs> a bit of time. Fair it's enough. fine, but uh, it still sounds worth them at least taking a look at it. If it's secrets, that might kill the brain. For all we know, Gozo speaks the language. Well, they came from another realm. Well, maybe they can. Um, so maybe they can get bring them over real quick. The point with the, yeah, go. Why don't you go get them, Solrak, and I 
and I turn to him and I say, just, just so you know, don't, don't be surprised by them. Yeah. Hey, uh, it goes, uh, we got something for you that, uh, maybe you might be able to read. Uh, it looks like it's a book on secrets that could be about the brain. Would you mind taking a look? Uh, yeah, you know, I, I'll, I'll check it out, sure. Um, yeah. And uh, I look back at the dragon. By the way, there's like a weird fox lady that's holding the book. Uh, don't scare her too much. Uh, yeah, Lauren Azel comes following right behind him, too. Lauren is like, uh, I'll come with you guys, too. As he uh, looks around all the dead mind flayers on the ground. And he kind of starts sweating a little bit. A cold sweat. Uh, seeing them. And thinking about potential future. Uh, as you guys make your way back in here with Gosa. Uh, leading the way. Uh, the Arcana Loth's eyes go wide. As she sees uh, the dragon. The crystal dragon. Says, <gasps> she kind of grips the book tighter now. He says. You're all trying to trick me aren't you? <laughs> I said, no, don't no, be, no. We told I said, you. don't be a, Jesus. Don't be upset. <clears throat> so, you know, just look at it. And look at you. You're a freaking fox in a dress. What are you? Mm. Who are you to judge anybody? Ooh, I, I would take that as a compliment. Thank you. You're not too bad yourself. <laughs> oh, well, thank fox you. in but, a dress. Uh, here's Goza. Like, called me that in a while. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, man. Well, here's Goza. Goza, try to read it. Uh, Goza goes over here and looks at the book and kind of like looks back at you guys with raised eyebrows and then turns back over to the book and starts to try to thumb through it. Uh, let's see if he can make sense of it. Uh, he kind of just, after a couple of minutes, throws up his hands like, sorry guys, got nothing. This is beyond my understanding. While we're here, Foxy Lady, um, do you have an idea as to what those crystals on the walls back there are for what they mean? I haven't the slightest clue. I just know that uh, I don't know, they seem to be powered with some sort of uh, arcane energy, but uh, let's see yeah, something. Really. Let's see something. Um, yeah says yeah, they definitely carry some sort of arcane energy and uh you say that there's dead mind players in there i, I would i would stay away probably stay away but I think I'm uh, up the look if, I, if, if you're y'all are willing to help me let's uh let's not waste any more time then right that's right um Solrak, as you're walking back into the room with Goza and uh, Loar and Izel, they would say to you that, uh, hey, you know, we uh, we investigated the rest of the area around here and did not see any other doors on this side. Just the one. Uh, you said that the doors close in a short period of time? That's right, they do. Well, then... I think we need to get back through that door if we are I think the the north side is where we need to go. Well, let's make it quick then. <laughs> and I start running. <laughs> I start flying actually. I see everybody moving and makes sense to me and I and I and I, and I look at her as we leave. If you're going to be locked in here, feel free to stay. Otherwise, follow. Kind of looks back down at her books and, like, back up with you guys and then back down at her book. I'm going to stay. I'm going to stay. I can feel it. I'm going to get somewhere soon with this. Yeah, so, Rack, if you go in that room, this the wall in that alcove, it's, it's knotted almost like scar tissue in there. I don't see the door anymore. Did you 
freeze? No. I don't see the door anymore. It's just guard tissue. Uh, no, I'm sorry. When I'm oh. so, saying I'm right here where you were. Uh, oh, okay. This like rough patch right there. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to slash it with my sword. Okay. Yeah. Go up and you take your sword and you begin to slash and hack into the wall. Uh, you cut into it uh, once, twice, three times, and you take a step back, take a breath, and as you take your step back, you watch as the flesh kind of <laughs> melts back together, creating a remelted uh, piece of flesh, uh, scar tissue once again. You said I saw the door for a second? No, no. You slash into it a couple times, and you watch as the as you take a breath after your your three attacks in you know like a combat round. Uh, you, you watch as the flesh melds back together. Um, see like healing itself. Um, similar to how you saw like when um, Jibber Jaws and uh, and um, what was his name? Shalfie were digging the hole in the other room. We weren't really making any progress anywhere because the flesh kept on regenerating. Strange. Uh, oh, I'm gonna lose. I'm gonna see if it looks like anybody got something out of there before I keep moving. Uh, make an investigation roll. Fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah, so it looks like, you know, someone did a similar thing to what you're doing now, hacked and slashed at this wall, and um, the wall has regenerated, and actually, you know, as scar tissue does, it actually like, gets, like, tougher there, and that's kind of, like, what's happened in this spot. Doesn't look like anyone got anything here, but potentially someone, you know, was trying to cut through this spot, or maybe even did cut through, but uh, has completely healed over into a solid chunk of scar tissue now. Weird. Alright, I'm gonna get out. Yeah. Uh, Sorak is running door. out, looking for the door. Uh, Wilma, you're still by those activation rods that are you know, like 20 feet away from each other or whatever, and the rest of the gang in there as well. Fang, uh, you were checking those out too. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I kind of look at everybody. and uh, Are we leaving, or... Are we staying? Well, sounds like we're leaving. I like how we said that the door was closing in a second, and now everybody's fucking. Are we leaving or are we staying? Uh, Gore and Izel would say, uh, kind of nudge you, Wilma. Uh, those rods look similar to the ones that were down in our chamber. Perhaps they need yes, to be activated gotta... as well. Uh, we just yeah, gotta I figure out where the door is. Yeah, if, well, no, if these obviously open the door um, to the bottom of the right. of the area. But the only I... issue is, will it work if uh, two different people are holding the rods? Or, you know, we have a dragon that can reach them. Um, and I kind of, like, fold over here, and it's, you know, I kind of ask, um, do we want to get this book or not? Yes. Solrek, as you stand by the doors, you hear a mechanism start to move within the walls around them. I'm going to scream at them, Guys! You better fucking move! Sorry, Goza. And, and I, can and you I'm uh, try to hold the door? All right. Open. Well, let's go, guys. All right, Goza. You know what you need to do. Are you talking to the dragon, or is it a yell again? Fucking move! Goza. Holy oh, shit! Which one's Goza to you? The dragon. No, that's Lil R and Izel. No, you <laughs> That's why I was like, which one? <laughs> yeah. 
Is Goza not the dragon? No, Goza's the, the no. mage. Oh, shit. Yeah. Um, you know what to do, Jay. 15. Uh, I forget what I need to roll. There we go. All right. So, uh, Solrak, you yell. What do you yell again? You guys hear them? You hear him, rather? Say, guys, fucking move! As you're yeah, trying to hold the door open. saying that the doors from the wall start to slide on in. Uh, Larnin begins to run after Fang and Wilma, getting much closer. Uh, Lauren Izel and Gosa uh, waiting back. Uh, Lauren Izel gets shocked, <laughs> jolted with energy as he grabs onto the activation rods. Uh, Sorak, you can hear move, more movement coming from the north now through the walls as uh, you can hear them now flapping from back where you guys came from. Uh, Gosa flying right behind him, Lauren Izel uh, leading the way. Uh, the doors are like beginning to close. And Lauren Izel just. Let's see. Slides his way on in there, just making his <laughs> way in. Uh, let's and the rest of you guys, as the door's closing, what are you doing? I see two people still standing on one side. Imagine everybody would, would would run through as they see it open. Right. And goes uh, uh, as the door is just about to close. You see, he like puts his hands behind his back and tucks his head in forward as if he's like a. Uh, Rocket Man or something, as he flies forward, and you see, watch his chest like skim against the door as he barely squeezes through, just makes it in there as this door closes behind you guys, slamming shut. Did um, Lorenzo touch the? Yeah, he took uh, fourteen points of damage. Okay. Um. But the door was still closed, so I kind of mentioned everybody. I think that might open to the one to the north. Let's keep going. And I just kind of start running up to the north to see if a door opened. Why do they got to make that prong so far away from the doors? I think that's my design. <sighs> yeah, it's up here. Or people right? would never do that. Well, what's up? I said Bork Nork would never do that. <laughs> hey, Bork Nork does what Bork Nork wants. <laughs> That's the right one. <laughs> uh, oh shit, you froze on my screen. Let me refresh this. Because I, I see Wilma still up in one corner over here, but then on my DM screen, you're right by the door. Mm. Um. Let's see. There you go. Yep, and uh, so we're, Fang and Silrak, are you... Uh, there you go, there's Fang. Silrak down there? Where's he at? Um, where the hell just happened to my... Uh, uh, come uh, on. Where you at, Silrak? Went the wrong way. Run, you slow barbarian. Yep. As uh, you guys make your way into this room with the, the cots where these, these cultists were, were sleeping and resting... Uh, you find that the door that you guys saw prior has now opened opened wide, exposing another room to the west. And you see, as you make your way into this room, uh, that is mostly taken up by an enormous pool, roughly about 60 feet across. And the, the liquid in this pool, it's murky, uh, but it's got this dim green light that kind of wells up from the depths down below. And... Uh, as you look in here, again, you can see that there are two more tapered rods uh, to the north as well. Of course there are. But this... Just look at everybody. Not a, another fucking pool. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, you see the, the pool glowing with this green kind of light, and uh, the fluid inside of it seems very similar to uh, the fountain that you guys dove down before deeper and now, deeper to be honest guys that might be the way out of here 
or to Talavar. True. Now, do you think there's two prongs there lead to a door or down at the bottom of this pool? That seems to be most likely the the decision. Uh, of course. Do we think there's anything in the pool, though? As you say that, everyone kind of looks over there, and you see that there's uh, strange globs of like, just unidentifiable flesh just floating within it. Some of the flesh, you know, some of these globs are the size of a goldfish. Um... But others, the size of a uh, adult human. So we wow. take a quick gander. Yeah. Yeah. It's the only direction we've had at this point. That's fair enough. I gotta walk up to it. Silrek, you go over to the edge of this, and you look down into this this pool. As I mentioned, it's murky, but there is a dim green light that kind of wells up from the depths. As you look down there, that light looks miles away. Far deep into the depths of this, this briny pool. Of what, of course... It's reminiscent of cerebral fluid to you. Does look like this is the way then. Chitalvar. So guys, uh we came this far. I'm wondering if we can breathe under this fluid. We couldn't last time, so I guess not. It just seems so far that. away. Yeah, yeah, last time we could, right? You yeah, could, You could last time. Oh, we could? Okay, so we yeah, could. we should be fine. Yeah, we should be fine, then. Let me, uh... Alarney, since you were our tester last time, would you mind taking a dip again and seeing if uh, it's the same fluid? I step back. Kind of looks at you guys and says, Be ready with that healing, whatever you guys do every time. As he kind of drops his cloak down off his head and takes a deep breath and, and then plops it on and down into the fluids, and you see bubbles pop up onto the surface and uh, stays down there for 30 seconds or so and then pops up. You can breathe in it. I, I, I lean back to G Money next to me, and I go, "Fucking legend." <laughs> <sighs> I guess he does have his uh, his utility now and then, doesn't he? Uh, Larna, you didn't by chance see anything at the uh, at the bottom there, did you? No, it's. It's even deeper than the last one. What if we... Do you, do you feel anything after attempting to breathe under there? Any difference? Let's see. Um, as you say this to him, and he's kind of just like still like catching his normal breath once again. You watch as he like kind of... Sh um, like shrieks to himself as he grabs his temples and he uh, closes his eyes uh, tightly as you watch as he drops down to his knees. And he, ah! Ah! he starts to cry out and as he grabs his temples and um, you watch as blood starts to drip from his eyes. It seems like not a fun place to go, guys. He looks yeah. up at you and wipes the blood off his face. <sighs> I'm okay. It's just one of those headaches. They happen 
in this place every now and so then. So it's not from the flu. Uh, no, I it's, <laughs> it probably was a catalyst, but it it's a passing, it's a fleeting moment. I uh, look over at the dragon and just kind of give her give her a look, like. Mm -hmm. Guys, I'm, I'm, I'm fine now, really. He looks as he's wiping the blood off his face and he looks down at his hand, smears it on his clothes. <sighs> don't feel like I have to... He's kind of shivering now. I, I don't think I have too much time left with the state of things. If, if this takes us to where you think it takes us to, the time is now. That is now to go in or for you? Did I? Did I? To, to to go in to to to, live, <laughs> oh, to, to, to be to be heroic. Hey, hey, just just making sure you gotta word things carefully here. When you're, I whisper in the you know. Solrex ear. I'm glad you asked that because I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> wow. I know, he worded that very weirdly. So. Okay, let's go. Come on, Larry. All right. Let's, let's go ahead. Well, th there's, there's a... To the, to the before game. we go in, does does somebody need to hit the... Uh, hit the levers? Uh, that's why we keep you around, Wilma. Pull the lever! Lauren is still kind of like wiping off his face. <laughs> Stands up tall after he, you know, he's down on the ground. Says, I'll take care of it, this one. What a legend. See, <laughs> says, everyone's ready. I think I'm ready Good. if you guys are. And I kind of look over at Dragon and Friend. You guys jumping in too? They both kind of look at each other like shocked and like kind of like, like this is really what's happening. Uh, and uh, Lil Arnizel says, We will follow you all. We will follow the Wrecking Crew. Yeah! Sorry. Don't no worry, you can breathe in the goo. It's just gross. I'm sure we've been through worse. We must be used to that. Garnin rolls up his sleeves and looks back at you guys. Says, Get ready to jump. He goes over and grabs onto the rods, shocking himself, uh, shaking back and forth, and he takes. Oof. Ooh. 34 points of damage as he <laughs> is gripping wow. hard on, onto this, and you watch this. Like max fucking damage. His body. You're it's supposed to let go, Lord. <laughs> like a cartoon. It's like you can almost see his skeleton on the inside as he's grabbing this for a second. It's flashes of like white light surrounding his body and he finally lets go and his hair is all standing on ends he's got like charred bits of flesh um, all around his body his clothes are, are starting to like smoke a little bit from a little bit of singedness that's uh happened to them and he lets go he drops down to one knee and quickly pushes himself back up and says Cannonball! As he runs and jumps on into the the fluid and splashes on in there, and he watches the stick viscous liquid just kind of splashes up in like a slow motion, and then ripples on the surface, spreading out. It makes a strange kind of slopping sound. What a legend! Rachel, and I just look back at the dragon and then jump in. Yeah. You guys all jump in. Uh, Gosa and Laura and Izel look at each other, and uh, Laura and Izel grabs Gosa off the back of his uh, his cloak with his teeth and tosses him in there. And he goes, "You fucker!" <laughs> As he splashes on in there, and then Laura and Izel goes up to the sky and whoo, swan dives straight down into the murky waters. Uh, I need everyone to make a wisdom saving throw as you make your oh, way on in God. here.
Not 20. A 29 oh, on the dice. Nice. Oh. That's crazy. Six. Oof. Roll a six, eight, okay. Um, so, uh, you three will take, uh, or Soul Rack and Fang will take ten points of, of psychic damage. Uh, Wilma, you will take five. Larnin, uh, has already rolled his. And goes. Oh, wait, how long do you think it's been since the short rest? Uh, since the short rest, it's been about uh, at least an hour. I would say it's been an hour and 15 now. As you all dive in here, strange fluid presses in on all sides. Uh, contact with it, it, you feel like as it connects you to a vast alien presence, your minds all feel like they're linked, not just to one another, but to others. You see clouds of blood and strange lumps of flesh float around in this fluid around you guys. They don't seem harmful to you, but you sense that they conceal the movements of an enormous predator and makes this pool its home. And that's what we'll pick it up the next time we get together. Enormous. Boop, boop, boop. Hell yeah, buddy. Hell Jesus yeah. Christ. <laughs> Good one, guys. That was fun. That was fun. I liked it. A lot of chatting. Hell yeah. Good RP. Uh, all right, well, that is what we will call it tonight. Uh, do we have a Sunday game in us this week? Yeah, Under. buddy. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, because we probably won't play next Sunday. That's correct, yeah, because, uh, and then I think the following Sunday, Super too, Bulls. I think uh, the 18th, Johnny's out of town, too. Or the 17th, or I 18th. might be back. I mean, that is Super Bowl Sunday, so I don't know if we're playing, but, yeah. That's Super Bowl Sunday? What's the 11th? Donna, yeah. next week is Sunday. That's Super, Super Bowl, Bowl Sunday. Sunday. The 11th is, right? And Super Bowl Sunday is the 11th. The 11th is Super Bowl Sunday. Oh, okay. Yeah, cool. so the 18th we're good. That's perfect, because I'm probably yeah. off the 11th, so that's perfect, then. Okay. I'm not watching yeah. the Super Bowl, but I'm probably off. Um, <laughs> cool. Uh, anything else before we close it off for the night, guys? That was awesome. That was great. I liked Good it. Shit. Cool, cool. Well, Good shit. If no one has any closing remarks, then we will see you. Oh, all actually. Soon. Yep. Uh, feels great to be right, you guys. Take your short rest <laughs> whenever you want them. They feel great. <laughs> that was the one place you could take a short rest in this in this place. <laughs> Uh, so go ahead and uh, you have taken a short rest so no need to do that but look out for those goblins under the stairs and we will see you guys on Sunday <laughs> have a good night Later. take care Later. bye see ya